Welcome back to How to Cake It. I'm Yolanda, and today I am caking a giant cupcake pinata filled with the brand new mini fingerlings. Hi, guys! I loved the original fingerlings, but these ones are small enough to fit into cake. I cannot wait to show them all to you guys, but you'll have to wait till the end of the episode to get a really good look. Thanks to Wowie for supporting and collaborating with us on this video. I wish our company was named Wowie. <laughs> I totally agree. Uh, right? What were we thinking? To bake this giant pinata cupcake, I baked 14 pounds of my ultimate chocolate cake and 16 pounds of my ultimate vanilla cake. Now I'm going to level them and remove the caramelization from the bottom. That's a total of 30 pounds. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you need a backup there, so. No, I did, I did, but I, today I managed. I pulled through. My two rectangular vanilla cakes are a lovely marbled color. I marbled together yellow and teal. Very how to cake it. If you want more info on how I divided and colored my batter, just click the I and it will take you to my blog. Then I trimmed the caramelization off the sides of my rectangular cakes as well. I need to cut both of my cakes in half Widthwise, I think I'm telling you the right way. <laughs> Let's just cut Width to the foot. <laughs> yes, look at how I cut them in half. The only cake I have left is my red round six inch cake, but I'm gonna deal with that later on. It's time for Sir Squeeze to come in and help me simple syrup all of these cakes. He's got a big job ahead of him. So I shower the chocolate cakes and the marbled vanilla cakes with simple syrup and allow it to soak in. It's time to fill and stack my chocolate cakes first. I'm going to stack these upside down. You know, sometimes there's gonna be some flipping. Wowee! <laughs> Imagine I just start saying wowee throughout the whole video. These cakes are gonna make up the base of the cupcake pinata, what would be like the cupcake paper. So I need to stack the cakes in order, the two larger slabs on the bottom and the two slightly smaller slabs on the top. So all four, Italian meringue buttercream between, and now I'm going to chill it in the fridge before carving. And now it's time to fill and stack my marbled cakes. I'm going to stack these in two sections. So I sandwich together the two longer pieces, and then I sandwich together the two shorter pieces and place them in the fridge to chill. The next thing I want to do is round the sides of my two marbled cake stacks because I want the cupcake to have this look. Do you understand what I'm saying? That there. What I'm going to do is use a circle cutter to just sort of press into the sides at the end of my stacks and that way I can mark that perfect rounded curve that I'm looking for and then use my serrated knife to cut along that curve on both sides on both stacks. Footage. Okay, next. Time to turn the page. Whoa. <laughs> yes. And now it's time for a How to Kick It classic. A secret chamber. At this point, we need some sound footage for that, secret chamber. That's where Cody should have been like, chamber, chamber, chamber. A secret chamber. Chamber, chamber, chamber. Oh, yes. <laughs> so from the longer stack of cake, I'm gonna lay down just a rectangular template. What you wanna do is leave enough cake around the border of the secret chamber, at least about two inches. And this way, whatever we fill the secret chamber with won't be strong enough to push the cake out. We don't wanna make a cake girdle today. And then from the shorter stack of cake, we're gonna also cut out a chamber that's a little smaller because the cake is smaller. And we're gonna cut through both layers of cake and remove the cake. The next important step is to ice the inside of the chamber. And the reason I like doing this is just, it, it's like crumb coating the secret chamber in essence, so that while you're filling it, all the crumbs aren't sort of falling into the chamber. There's nothing secret about crumbs being in a cake. You know what I mean? Surprise! <laughs> you cut your cake and there's cake crumbs. I know you weren't expecting that. I'm gonna take my chocolate cake out of the fridge and cut an A-line cut on both sides so that when we flip this cake over, it looks like a cupcake bottom, like the cupcake paper. So the way I like to do this is use a ruler and hold it up sort of to the front. Mark how far in you wanna go from the side and then I hold a ruler from that mark down to the bottom edge and I just drag my knife through the cake. And this way when I cut with my serrated knife, I can use those lines as a guide. 
okay. footage. Once I'm happy, I crumb coat the whole cake and chill. I didn't forget about my six inch round red cake. That is going to be the cherry on top of this cupcake pinata. I simply wanna just follow the hump of my cake and carve down and around, just creating more of a dome-like shape. And then I do wanna cut off the caramelization from the bottom. Once I'm happy with the shape, I place this cherry on its own board and then crumb coat and chill. There's a lot of crumb coating. There actually. really is a lot of crumb coating. It's not more than usual. It's just that there's all these different parts to the cake, so I have to tell you I did it to each part. Mm -hmm. It's finally time to bring in my cute little friends, the mini fingerlings. So I poured in a layer of the It's Not Even My Birthday sprinkles so that these guys could just, these guys and gals are gonna be so comfortable on a bed of sprinkles. I wanna lay you down in a bed of sprinkles. You have to do this, it's very serious. How have we managed to use that song twice? Cause it's an amazing song. I had to lay them all in linked together because these guys are better together. Just like how to cake it. Like look at this. This is clearly Connie with the bow on its head. Yeah. This is clear. Look, I don't even have to tell you who this is. This is Jocelyn, and this is me, and I love bags. That's why that's my charm. Here at How to Cake It, we're all about being together, having fun, and enjoying moments as a team. And that includes with you guys. Which is why we want to give you guys the chance to win a mini Fingerlings collection. There's even more than Connie Lund and Jocelyn in the collection. <laughs> and an amazing How to Cake It prize pack that includes a signed cake book. I'm not sure who signed it. Who, who's signing it? <laughs> we should Imagine have. just a random <laughs> signature. Wait until the very end of this video to find out how you can win this. I top the mini fingerlings with more sprinkles and then I add a square of cake on top. Oh, it's the door. To close the chamber. The chamber is now closed. Da, da, da. When will the mini fingerlings get out? Now that the cupcake part of the cake is complete, I'm going to crumb coat it and chill. Yes, there was another crumb oh coat and God. chilling. Another okay. one. Mm -hmm. But it's done now. And make sure to share this video. Get the word out that I'm an amazing singer. I'm going to lick. Jocelyn. <laughs> Multi-talented. What do they say? <laughs> triple threat. Triple threat. That's right. Triple threat. Cake decorating. Cake decorating. Throwing myself onto a bed of sprinkles and singing poorly. <laughs> there. Now that all of that crumb coating and chilling has been done, we can ice all three of our cakes and chill them. The cupcake bottom, the cupcake, and the cherry. Oh, man, this episode's really exciting because now, I'm gonna take that chocolate cake, which is the cupcake bottom. I'm gonna place a perfect size board right on the top of it right now. And then I'm gonna flip. I'm gonna flip it right side up so now the A-line is this way, just like a cupcake paper. And now I just need to, <laughs> oh, I lied. There's more crumb coating. Oh my God, really? Yeah, because the top, what was the bottom, oh, right? Right, right? So just take a little bit of buttercream. You can even use the crummy buttercream that you have and just apply a thin layer to the top of the cake so it won't dry out. Stop, fondant time. Thank you, MC Hammer. So what I need to do is roll out my dark gray fondant nice and thin, and then I'm gonna place it on some cake boards and chill it for a moment. Then I remove it from the fridge and use a ruler and a sharp knife to cut it into even strips. Once I have all of my strips, I use a pair of herb scissors. And what I wanna do is cut into my strips of fondant, just sort of a little more than halfway. So you wanna leave a band of fondant so you're able to pick it up. <laughs> Otherwise you'll just be left with a bunch of little sticks and you'll have to place it one by one. <laughs> I wonder if someone's done it that way by accident and then gone, oh. 
Yeah, that would not be fun. <laughs> that would be more tedious than this is. The first strip of fondant that you add to the bottom of the cake should actually just be a plain band of fondant. And that is so if we see through the first layer of frays, we still see gray, we don't see white buttercream. Time to start adding the frayed fondant. So I add my strips on opposite sides. I like to measure the cake first. Surprise. Really? Yeah, wow. you know why? You don't want to waste it. That fraying takes some time. So there's no reason to pick up a whole strip every time and then waste it. Just cut it a little bit bigger than the cake, pick it up and just glue it right onto the cake. And make sure that that plain piece of fondant is just above the last strip you laid. So you're gonna go all the way around, adding strips, trimming all the way up the cake. Sped up footage. <laughs> The next thing I wanna do is paint this dark gray fondant silver. I mix together some silver luster with clear food grade alcohol and then I just paint it all over the tassels, all over the cake. It's quite the departure because I love to paint cakes gold. <laughs> oh, you added a laugh. Yes, I added a laugh. And as it turns out, the rarest of the mini fingerlings that you can collect is named Gold. <laughs> Don't forget, there are 36 mini fingerlings that you can collect, bracelets, charms for their tails, and best of all, Goldie. At last we meet, her name is Goldie. Nice to meet you, I envy you. Check the description below to learn more about mini fingerlings. <sighs> Something really exciting right now. Dowels. Dowels aren't as exciting as gold. No. <laughs> I'll admit that. So I need to insert some dowels into the cupcake bottom. First I insert one dowel, mark where it meets the top of the cake, pull it back out, and then I cut all of my dowels according to that height and push them all into the cake. I spread a little more buttercream on top of the cake just to make sure it comes in contact with the board under the cupcake, and then I carefully raise my cupcake tier and add it to the top. Make sure it's centered. You want just as much buttercream poofs on either side, you know? Don't be tempted to cover each part of your cake and then stack it because these little pinata tassels are very fragile and they will break off. Back to herb scissors and creating pinata tassels. For the cupcake portion of this cake, I've decided to use two colors, which are the same two colors as the cake yellow and teal. So I roll my yellow and teal into sheets just like I did the dark gray. I cut strips and then I use my herb scissors to cut the tassels. And once again, I'm gonna add these tassels, this time alternating colors. This weekend coming up is a holiday for my US yo-yos, but we are celebrating worldwide with a super sale at howtocakeit.com. You can get things like our deluxe membership, which includes our cake tea club and our sprinkle service membership that comes with free fun gifts. Like. Like. Watch this, watch this out. I know. It actually stuck to my lip gloss. Yeah! Balloons that you can throw at your friends. I'm glad she's just throwing balloons. Now this shape is a little more different than the bottom because it has these curves. So just pay close attention that you're still aligning the colors, if you know what I mean, footage. You still want to keep those colors aligned, but make sure to go all the way into the curve and then back out. And when you get to the top, keep in mind that we're going to be adding our cherry on top. So you don't have to cover all the way into the center because at the end of the day, you want the top to be flat and be able to hold your cherry. So what I did is I placed a six inch pen when I got to the top, just sort of as a marker, so I would know what I had to cover with my teal and yellow and try to leave the top center free. I'm going to add some dowels into the cupcake portion of my cake. Obviously, they can't go through the fingerlings. We don't want to hurt these sweet little mini fingerlings. So we're going to add some dowels to the perimeter around the secret chamber. 
and then we're gonna place our round cherry cake on top, and you guessed it. I roll out some red fondant, cut strips, use our special scissors to create the pinata tassels, and then add these strips all the way around the cherry up to the top. Guys, I fully expect you to do random photos and videos with your mini fingerlings, and tag me on Instagram with the hashtag fingerlingsfeels. I know this is a piñata, but it's also a cake. So first we slice, and then we smash. That was so much fun. Honestly, when you guys collect a bunch of mini fingerlings, make this cake and bring it to your friends and smash it together. Okay guys, this is your chance to win the entire new collection of mini fingerlings. Go to my Instagram right here and find this image. All the details on how you can win are there and I will put them in the description below as well. Thanks again to Wowie for supporting and collaborating with us on this video. Wowie! <laughs> Click here to watch my step-by-step -step Kate Middleton handbag tutorial and here to watch my fruitcakes compilation.